Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I recently picked up Anker's latest MagSafe battery for the iPhone, the Anker MagGo, and I've been using it for about a week or so. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I've been using the Anker PowerCore and Apple's MagSafe battery, and of the two of them, I've always preferred the PowerCore, mainly due to its extra battery capacity and the fact that it can be used as a wide battery pack too. The MagGo improves on a few things over the old power core, so today we'll take a look at what's changed, what's the same, and how it compares to both the power core and the Apple MagSafe battery if you're trying to decide between them, so let's get right to it. The first thing you'll notice is the new design. It's a big improvement in look and feel compared to the power core. It uses a much smoother plastic casing now and it feels much more premium, very similar in fact to the MagSafe. The seams blend in a lot better with the new design, to me, the power core looked a bit like something from 10 years ago. It was very dated with its design. When sticking it to your phone, the magnets feel a lot stronger than those used on the power core and the MagSafe. Although the alignment magnets that stop it from spinning around on the back do feel a little bit weaker now. Notice how on the power core it just sort of snaps into place, whereas on the MagGo, it's really easy to just sort of swivel it with one finger. But there is a reason for this, which we'll see why shortly. And it does charge and work through a MagSafe case but it won't work with a non-MagSafe one. There's a whole bunch of new colour options to choose from. I went for Dolomite White to match my white iPhone, but it also comes in Interstellar Grey, Misty Blue, Lilac Purple and Buds Green. They're very soft pastel colours, and they all complement the new design well. I think it looks really sleek. It's noticeably thinner now, but still a tiny bit thicker than the MagSafe battery, and a lot taller than both of them. It works with all models of the iPhone 12 and 13, but when it comes to the 12 and 13 mini, while it will charge them, it does overhang off the bottom of the phone by about a centimetre. So if that bothers you, you might want to just stick with the power core or the MagSafe if you're using a smaller phone. When using it, you no longer have to press the power button to turn it on before placing it on the back of your phone. The MagGo is just always on, which is much more convenient. But it's worth mentioning that you can't actually turn the battery off while it's attached. You have to just always have it on. It's always charging while it's on the back of your phone. The button on it is only used to check the battery level with LED indicators. As before, there's no battery widget integration like Apple's MagSafe battery has. Although that's not really Anker's fault, that's just something that Apple has blocked away so that only they can use it with their own MagSafe battery. There's still the same USB-C port for charging the battery pack itself or for charging out to other devices, which is really useful. And it comes with a 60 centimeter USB-C to USB-C cable. My favorite new feature of the MagGo is the built-in stand that's hidden on the back. It's made from a sort of rigid faux leather type material, and you just fold it into position and it snaps magnetically right into place. It kind of reminds me of the iPad folio cases, the way that it folds into this triangle shape. It does only have one angle, which is about 40 degrees, but you can use it in portrait just for general browsing or in landscape when watching films or videos, and it's really easy to rotate between the two. I think this is why Anker went for a less powerful alignment magnet to make it easier to switch orientations, but it does make it easier to accidentally rotate it when you don't mean to. I find the stand really useful if I'm on a long train journey, I'll often like to stick on a TV show or a film, and before I'd try to like lean my phone up against something like a, a water bottle, only for it to inevitably fall over, and of course eat a big chunk of my battery when I'm watching something. Now I can just prop my phone up and keep it charged and ready for when I get to my destination, which is great. And I really like how it blends in with the design and it barely adds any thickness to it overall. The MagGo has the same 5000 mAh capacity as the PowerCore, and almost double that of the MagSafe, which is just under 3000. And Anker says that their new mini cell technology reduces the size of the overall battery without compromising power and charging efficiency, which is how they've been able to slim down the whole product. Anker hasn't provided any numbers on how much charge to expect this time around, like they did with the power core, but as it has the same capacity with only slight differences in its watt hour and voltage rating, the MagGo likely provides roughly the same amount of charge as the power core, which is around 95% of a charge with an iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, or 75% of a charge with a 12 Pro Max. For the iPhone 13s, expect less of a charge overall, as they have bigger batteries compared to the 12s. You can also charge AirPods on these if you have some with a wireless charging case. 
When buying a wireless battery like any of these, it's important to know that wireless charging is going to be less efficient and slower than wired charging. Wireless charging is limited to 7.5 watts here, up from 5 watts with the power core and MagSafe, but still only half the speed of Apple's MagSafe charger, which is currently the fastest way to charge wirelessly on iPhone. But if you have a USB-C to lightning cable, you can always charge your phone faster and more efficiently when you really need it, which is something that you can't do with Apple's MagSafe battery. In my test using a 12 Pro Max, a full wireless charge from the MagGo took the iPhone from 10% up to 82, giving it an extra 72% of battery charge, and it took just over two hours to do so, which is actually an improvement over the power core in both efficiency and speed, and it's still way better than the Apple MagSafe battery, which in my test only got me about 50% of a charge due to its smaller capacity. It does get warm when wirelessly charging your phone, but not burningly hot or anything, at least not in my use so far, but you don't really feel the battery when it's on your phone, it just sort of sits in the curve of your hand. You can charge the MagGo and your phone at the same time by plugging the MagGo into some power and then putting your phone on top and using it like a sort of wireless charging pad, but you can't reverse wireless charge from your iPhone to the MagGo like you can with the MagSafe battery, but again, that's just a limitation that Apple's put in place. At the moment, only they can use the reverse wireless charging. Price-wise, the MagGo costs £50 or $60, which is about £5 or dollars more than the power core, but it is still about half the price of the MagSafe, so it's definitely way more affordable. I really like this new MagGo battery. It feels a lot nicer compared to the power core. Design-wise, it's more on par with the MagSafe battery now. It feels really sleek and it looks a lot more modern. I never would have thought of adding a stand to a battery like this, but it turns out it's really useful to have. And the fact that you can use it in portrait or landscape makes it way more usable in different situations. For a MagSafe battery, it gives some of the best battery life of all of the wireless batteries that I've used yet. Way more than Apple's battery pack and more than the power core too, which is impressive. In terms of the battery itself, yes, you can spend less and get bigger, wired battery packs, but I've always liked batteries like this for their convenience and not having to worry about wires dangling around when I'm wanting to charge my phone when I'm using it on the go. If you've already got the power core battery, then there isn't too much reason for you to get this one unless you really want the stand or you really like the new design. But if you're looking to get your first MagSafe battery, I'd definitely recommend the MagGo over both the power core and Apple's own MagSafe battery. And as always, if you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll leave some links below. I really hope that you found this video useful. If you have, give it a like and let me know. If you've got any questions, then feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. And I just wanted to take a moment just to say thank you to everyone watching and supporting my videos. The channel just recently crossed 2,000 subscribers, which is just amazing. And yeah, it was not long ago that I remember hitting 100. So just thank you to everyone watching and supporting my videos. If you're new here and you'd like to see more tech content from myself, then join the channel and hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.